네, 안녕하세요. 그 우리가 4월 15일이 원래 수업일이었지만은 그 어떤 투표일이기 때문에 제가 여러분들에게 투표를 잘 하라는 그런 의미에서 어, 뭐, 그 강의를 올리지를 않았습니다. 음, 그렇지만은 우리가 그 중간에 공휴일이 있다라고 하더라도 저희 수업 시수는 잘 맞춰야 되기 때문에 어, 어떤 여러분들에게 그 이번 주 빠진 그 어, 내용에 대해서 제가 이제 보강 그 렉처를 어, 이제 녹화를 하고 올리도록 하겠습니다. 어, 어쨌든 이거는 그 여러분들 그 법정 수업 일수는 자 법으로 딱 정해져 있는 거기 때문에 제가 이제 잘뭐 지켜야 되는 것이고요. 뭐 이거는 이제 공휴일이 있다라고 하더라도 뭐 저희가 그 수업 일수는 딱 맞춰야 되는 그런 어, 상황입니다. 뭐 그래서 이제 그 오늘은 그 우리가 이제 그 어쨌든 수요일 날 이제 배웠어야 했던 그런 컴퓨터 그 아리스메틱에 대해서 플로팅 포인트 유닛 그 부분에 대해서 어, 강의를 시작을 하도록 하겠습니다. So So we are day of the due to the national vote uh, day on the April fifteenth. So we are day of uh, that day. So I can I uh, cancel the classes on the uh, April fifteenth. But uh, we need to uh, maintain. We need to uh, maintain or keep the some number of classes during the one semester. So I will. So I will record the, the lecture for the some missing uh, classes, and then I will upload the text lecture on the um, on the blackboard. Uh, so I will I will review the, the previous classes. Uh, 그 우리가 이제 그 저번 저번 시간에는 그 컴퓨터 아리스테마틱에 대해서 우리가 그 briefly 야 yeah, uh, cover을 했죠. 음, 뭐, 여러분들이 사실은 이 부분은 뭐, 그렇게 생소하진 않을 것이라고 생각을 하고 있습니다. 특히나 이제, 여러분들이 이제 컴퓨터 엔지니어링을 목표로 공부를 하고 있다라고 한다고 하면은, 그, 로직 디자인 코스를 들었을 것이라고 생각을 하고 있고요. 뭐, 그, 그 코스를 들었다고 한다면은, 그, 뭐, 그, 기본적인 인티지어 아리스메틱, 이런 그 아리스메틱이라는 거는 adder 그 다음에 subtractor 그 다음에 multiplier divider에 대한 내용이죠. 그그 그 기본적인 그런 아리스메틱 컴퓨터 아리스메틱에 대해서는 여러분들이 뭐 바로 <웃음> 배웠을 것이라고 이제 생각을 합니다. 뭐 근데 어려울 건 없죠. 왜냐면은 이게 뭐 어떤 차이죠? 우리가 그냥 그 십진수 decimal number calculation 하고 완전 똑같아요. 근데 그 숫자만 바이너리 넘버로 이제 바뀐 거죠. 뭐 그렇기 때문에 뭐 그렇게 어려운 것은 없고요. 라고 생각을 <웃음> 저는 하고 있고요. 음, 그 다음에 이제 하나, 하나 이제 우리가 어, 케어풀하게 다뤄야 될 것은 그거죠. 오버플로우 and 언더플로우. 왜냐면은 컴퓨터의 그 하드웨어 리소스 어쨌, 어쨌든 여러분들이 그 실행하는 인스트럭션이라든지 이런 넘버라든지 이런 것들은 다 컴퓨터 하드웨어에서 이제 돌아가는 거고요. 하드웨어는 그냥 뭐 한계가 있죠. 그 리미테 리소스가 그딱 정해져 있기 때문에 그 리소스를 넘어서는 어떤 연산에 대해서 그게 이제 오버플로우라고 우리가 이야기를 하고 있죠. 그 오버플로우를 잘 디텍션을 하는 거 그것만 이제 조심을 하면 됩니다. 그럼 그거 그것만이 우리 뭐 이런 컴퓨터 아리스메틱이 우리의 리얼 월드 아리스메틱하고 다른 점이라고 우리가 볼 수가 있겠죠. 오버플로우를 이제 디텍션 하면은, 그, 런 익셉션이 이제 발생을 하죠. 그, 어, 한, 어, 한 학생이 이제, 이제 피아자에 이제 질문 올렸는데 그 익셉션에 핸들링 하는 부분들은 그 답변을 이제 참고를 하시면 되겠습니다. 어, 뭐 멀티플리케이션도 역시나 우리가 하는 그런 멀티플리케이션 스텝하고 완전 동일해요. 뭐가 바뀌었다? 데시멀 넘버만 바이너리 넘버로 바뀌었다. 라고 여러분들이 생각을 하면 됩니다. 
그다음에 그 디테일드 임플리멘테이션 오브 멀티플리케이션은 우리가 여기서 배우진 않아요. 왜냐면 여기서는 우리는 그좀더 앱스트랙트 레벨에서 컴퓨터 아키텍처로 이제 다루기 때문에 뭐 실제적인 그런 뭐 디지털 러직 임플리멘테이션 그 이슈에 대해서는 우리가 커버를 하지는 않습니다. 그렇지만 기본적으로 가장 기본적인 임플리멘테이션 방법은 여러분들이 그래도 숙지를 하고 있어야 되겠죠. 아주 기본적인 이거는 그냥 뭐랄까 베이징 날리지예요. 뭐 그럼 멀티플라이 하는 방법 이렇게 뭐 여러분들이 보면 되겠고요. 어 그리고 하드웨어는 역시나 우리의 생각과 동일하게 동작을 시키면 됩니다. 그럼 별 특별한 내용은 없고요. 디비전 사실은 디비전은 이제 멀티플라이어의 디비전 이제 멀티플리케이션의 이제 인버스인 하죠. 뭐 그러니까는 멀티플리케이션은 우리가 파셜 프로덕트를 만들고 그 파셜 프로덕을 다 더하면 어큐뮬레이션 하면은 멀티플리케이션이 이제 끝나는 거긴 한데 디비전은 요거를 컨디셔널리 서버 스트렉트 그 빼기 연상을 진행을 하는 하게 되는 것이죠. 어, 그래서 이제 멀티플리케이션도 여러분들의 그 우리가 그 초등학교 때 엘리먼터리 스쿨에서 배웠던 그런 나노셈, 오데시멀 넘버의 나노셈 그 디비전하고 완전 동일합니다. 뭐 이게 그 바이너리 넘버라고 해서 뭐 특별한 건 없죠. 그러니까 이, 이 뭐냐 우리가 그냥 계산하는 하듯이 하드웨어는 그렇게 디자인이 되면은. 됩니다. 근데 이제 그 디비전은 뭐 우리가 이제 역시나 나누셈 할 때도 어, 그래, 십진수 나누셈도 비슷하듯이 이게 컨디셔널 서버 스트럭션이 들어가요. 항상 그 피스 그 우리의 그 컴퓨터를 컴퓨터 이제 연산해서 컴퓨터 프로세싱에서 컨디셔널이 들어가면은 그때 퍼포먼스에 문제가 생깁니다. 왜냐면은 이 컨디셔널은 그딱 정해져 있는 게 아니에요. yes가 뜰 수도 있고, no가 뜰 수도 있고요. true가 뜰 수도 있고, false가 뜰 수도 있죠. 뭐 그렇기 때문에 얘는 한번 시도를 해봐야, dynamically 한번 시도를 해봐야지만 이 그것이 동작이 결과가 결정이 되는 거죠. 어 그렇기 때문에 division은 multiplication 보다는 조금 더 퍼포먼스 상으로 더안 좋다라고 이야기를 했었습니다. 역시나 이제 그 디테일드 임플리멘테이션 오브 더 DB 디바이더는 어, 여러분들이 <웃음> 여기서 배울 건 아니에요. 그좀더 이제 디지털 로직 디자인의 어드밴스드 코스에서 혹 다룰 수는 있습니다. 그렇지만 여기서는 그 디테일드 임플리멘테이션 이슈는 다루진 않습니다. 음, 그 다음에 이제 그냥 어, 요새 이제 핫한 주제가 플로팅 포인트죠. 어, 사실은 어, 엔티저보다는 이런 플로팅 포인트로 우리가 표현할 수 있는 숫자는 숫자의 그 레인지 그 플로팅 포인트가 훨씬 많죠 많다 그 어쨌든 엔티저는 우리가 이제 정수 이제 수학에서 말하는 정수만 표현을 하고, 하고 있기 때문에 이런 뭐 소수라든지 소수를 표현하기 위해서는 우리가 플로팅 포인트 형식으로 표현을 해야 됩니다. 그래서 우리가 이제 C 프로그램을 할 때도 인티저 타입이 있고 그 다음에 플로팅 포인트 타입이 있죠. 플로팅 포인트는 뭘로 하죠? 플로이나 더블로 우리가 데이터 타입을 정의를 하죠. 자 그러면은 컴퓨터 하드웨어에서도 이렇게 플로팅 포인팅 포인트 타입을 플로 FP 넘버를 플로팅 포인트 넘버를 표현을 해야 되는 거고요. 그거는 어디에 정의가 되겠다? i t r i p l e 스탠다드에 정의가 되어 있습니다. 어, 어쨌든 이제 두 가지 방법으로 이제 정리가 되는데요. 네, two presentations가 있다고 했죠. single precision and double precision. single precision은 그, 그 size of the data type이 32 bit, 그래서 four byte죠. double precision은 어떻게 돼요? 64 bit, 그러니까는 eight byte가 되겠습니다. 어, 그래서 이제 이 시간에는 <웃음> 그 플로팅 포인트를 어떻게 이제 표현하는 그런 방법에 대해서 어, 좀 배우도록 하겠습니다. 
어, 어쨌든 이 인티저는 우리가 바이너리 넘버예요. 저, 저스트 바이너리 넘버니까 그 바이너리 넘버대로 표현하면 돼요. 그 다음에 투스 컴플리먼트 그 부분만 우리가 고려를 해서 표현을 하면 됩니다. 그렇지만 은 플로팅 포인트 넘버는 정의가 되어 있죠. 그 스탠다드로 정의가 되어 있기 때문에 아 이런 식으로 표현을 해다 라고 그 스탠다드를 세계적으로 만든 것입니다. 그 스탠다드를 우리는 어, 그냥 기억을 해야죠. 어쩔 수 없죠. <웃음> 이런 사람들이 만든 스탠다드이기 때문에 스페시피케이션이기 때문에 그럼 이제 그 전에 스탠다드가 생기기 전에는 그냥 하드웨어 매뉴팩처러가 아, 나는 플로팅 포인트 넘버를 어, 내 마음대로 표현할 거야. 뭐 이런 식으로 많이 했는데 뭐 그러면은 이제 뭐 호환성 문제도 있고 어, 하드웨어도 그때그때 또 이렇게 뭐 다른 회사로 옮기면 다시 설계를 해야 되고 뭐 이런 여러 가지 어, 문제가 생기겠죠. 뭐 데이터를 저장을 할 때도 플로팅 포인트 타입으로 저장을 했는데 다른 머신에 가서 어, 실행을 못해요. 왜냐면 그 타입이 다르기 때문에 뭐 이런 문제가 생길 수도 있는 거죠. 뭐 그래서 이렇게 스탠다드로 이제 정해놓고 그 다음에 하드웨어 매뉴팩처러는 그 스탠다드에 맞게 이 플로팅 포인트를 처리를 하는 겁니다. So, so I will start the uh, today's class. So in the, in the today's class, I will cover uh, uh, the, uh, uh, regarding the floating point numbers and then floating point uh, specific standard and then how the computer uh, process the floating point numbers. So this is the, uh, as I, see, I believe I uh, already covered this, this slide, but I will repeat, repeat again. Uh, so this is the uh, floating point number format. So as you can see, uh, how can we uh, uh, represent the decimal floating point number? So 소수죠, floating point number. So decimal floating point number is composed of sine plus or minus, and then it has the significant like a uh, one point blah 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 or two point blah 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 blah, and then multiply by power of 10, and then this is called the exponent. So 10 of power of 10, so 10 to some number. So this is how we repre represent the floating point number in the decimal format. So in the binary format, so we need to only use one or zero. So the, the floating point number is also it's the, actually, actually has the same components. What? What, is, what are the components of the floating point number of the uh, decimal, uh, no, the binary number, uh, in the binary format? So, the computer system floating point number also required sign bit here. And then, exponent, exponent is the power of, no, no, it's a, it's, 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 because it's a, Binary number exponent is the power of 2, like 2 to n. And fraction part. Fraction part is the is fraction part composed the significant of the floating point number. And then we, uh, we can easily uh, represent the sine bit as the 0 is the non-negative or plus, and then 1 is the negative number, and then it's simple. And then the significant for the floating point number is has the range of 1.0 and 2 from 1.0 to 2.0. So that means that the significant of the computer floating point number has the 1 plus fraction. So this 1 is the some it's a constant part, so it's always one. And then some fraction part, like a one point, blah, 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 is the represented the fraction part of the floating point number. So for the single precision floating point number, this fraction part is, has the 23 bit, and then for the double precision floating point number, this uh, fraction part has the 52 bit, it's very large compared to the integer, maybe what? So uh, in the risk of 5, the integer has the 8 byte. Uh, 60, we use the 64 bit for the integer numbers also. So <laughs> the size is the same. So 
<coughs> the, but you, you can see that the, this significant is composed of as the constant part one. So you need to uh, memorize here, memorize this because the, the significant has, the, uh, has always the component one here. So it is because when the floating point number is represented as the uh, binary number, then I got 0 0.0000001, like blah, 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 blah. So when we represent the uh, floating point number with uh, uh, in a binary format, then we need to use the first one or the floating point number if the that number is not zero. So the one always appear in the some some uh, any any uh, location of the floating point number, but one will be when one will always appear and the float if the, the number is not zero. So the floating point number of the computer system has always one and then plus fraction part. So and then exponent is the power of two because it's binary number, so you need to remember. <laughs> so sometimes we I also confused, but you need to remember it's the power of two. And then actually the this exponent so the fraction is the also binary number, but exponent is the unsigned binary number. And then the actual number of the this exponent is the exponent minus bias. So so in the single precision uh, floating point number, the bias value is 127. And then for the double precision number, the bias is uh, 1203. So the re actual the exponent of the floating point number is the exponent minus bias. So if you want uh, uh, represent the uh, 2 to 0, then the, what is the exponent number of the it's 2 to 0? It's 127 for the single precision and then uh, 1203 for the uh, double precision number. So it's 0 for the exponent. So you need to remember this. Mm -hmm. So, and then for the uh, floating point number, those exponent 0, 0, 0, and then wall all 1 are reserved. So, these numbers are reserved for the, some denormal numbers, and then uh, some spe uh, specific definition of the not, not a number, but infinite. So, let's see the smallest. So, these values are reserved so and for the normal floating point number we cannot use all zeros or all ones for the exponent then what is the smallest number for the floating point number so exponent is zero 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 and then the last rsp digit the last digit is one so for the single precision the actual exponent is the one minus bias 127 so it's the minus 126. So it's 2, 2 minus 126. 2, 2 minus 126. And then for the significant, uh, so if the all fractions are, has the all, all uh, fraction, all bits of the fraction has all zeros, then significant is the 1.0, is a 1.0 because fractions are 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So 1.0 multiply 2 to minus 126 is the smallest value of the single precision. So it's a similar, uh, it's a approximately it's the uh, 1.2 multiplied by 10 to minus 38. So this is so also we can the uh, the, the, this number can has the sign sign here. Then what's the what is the largest value? 
for the largest value, the exponent is the all one except and then except the, the last bit, the last LSP bit. So last bit is the zero. So actual exponent exponent of the single precision is the 254 minus 127 is the 127. So 2 to 127. And fractions are all ones. So it's the 1.11111111. So fraction patterns all one. So this what is this this number? Is the uh, one over two plus one over four plus one over eight plus blah 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 blah. So this is the actually similar to one approximately. So one plus some some numbers similar to 1 is uh, similar to 2. So approximately the largest significant is the 2. So the 2 multiplied by 2 to 127 is the similar to 3.4 multiplied by 10 to 38. So this is the largest number that can be represented by the single precision floating point number. And for the double precision, also the exponent all zeros and then all ones are reserved. And then also the smallest value, the so exponent, the smallest value of the exponent is the all zeros except the, the LSP, the last bit. So last bit is the one. So exponent, uh, actual exponent of the uh, floating point number, double precision uh, floating point number is the one. 1022 is so minus 1022. So it's the 1.0 multiplied by 2 to minus 1022, which is the 2.2 multiplied by 10 to uh, minus 308. And then for the largest value, it's the same, the old one, and then the last bit is zero. Then you can find the, uh, you can calculate the exponent or real expo exponent of the double precision floating point number and then fraction is the uh, also actually so it's a near 2.0 so it's, this is the largest largest number that can be present, represented as as the double precision floating point number uh, uh, so let's talk about the floating point precision so it is precision actually is can sometimes the precision is still some critical issue for the uh, mathematics or scientific applications. So 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 actually the so we can represent the uh, floating point number with the binary format. So the precision is also limited by the number of bits. It can be uh, represented as the fraction. So, how about the single precision? What, what is the uh, number of bits for the fraction part? So, what is the fraction? So, 1 plus is a fraction. So, for the uh, single precision, the num number of bits for the fraction is the 23, I believe. <laughs> it's a 23 bits. It's a 23 bits. So, what is the resolution of the, this fraction? So, resolution is the, the smallest uh, some, uh, unit that can be represented as some numbers. So, the smallest resolution, the resolution of the smallest unit that can be represented as the uh, single precision is the 2 to minus 23 because the, the fraction is the 23 bit. So, Actually, the smallest fraction is the O0. Then, what is the smallest number that is not zero, but the bigger than the O, bigger than zero? Is the 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. The last bit is the one for the fraction. So, that's the resolution of the, the minimum resolution of the single precision. So, to, to 23 is uh, equivalent to the 23 multiplied. Log 10 to is the 
six decimal digit of a precision. So that means that in the decimal number, this precision is like a little uh, bum 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 here. So with uh, this single precision uh, a floating point number, we can represent the binary number such as the zero point. Actually, the the floating uh, after this point, we can uh, for the binary number, so we can represent the six decimal digit of precision with a single precision number. So you may think that oh, it's the the resolution is too uh, it's too low. <laughs> But it's true. So actually, for the double precision, it's a two to minus uh, fifty-two. It's the sixteen digit of the decimal digit. So, so uh, we may think that if the some number, the number, of the precision of the our some scientific data or some uh, real data has the some a uh, smaller resolution with a decimal number like a, it's, it's like a tens of uh, hundreds of uh, uh, decimal digit of a precision then these numbers cannot be handled by the computer system which use the double precision floating point number so in that case we can we need to develop the, some specific application that handles the that uh, that, resol that resolution of the uh, some scientific number or scientific data. But for the normal uh, applications, this resolution is enough. Okay, this is the example to represent the decimal number with the uh, floating point numbers. So it's the it's a minus 1.75. Uh, 1 1.75, not 75. So one point 7.5 so so in this number so one point so minus 1.75 is the as the is a sign bit here so we know that it's a negative number the sign bit is one and then how about the 1.75 it's the uh, one point divided by two so what's this number is the 1.5 multiplied by 2 to minus 1. So with the decimal number is the 0 0.75. Then 1.5 multiplied by 2 to minus 1. So in the single precision number, what is the format of the single precision or single precision floating point number? So fraction is the one plus fraction, and then exponent is the exponent is here is the minus one, the actual exponent. So what is the fraction? What is the fraction part? Is the zero point five is the one over two. Is a, so it is the actually one zero 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 zero. Then this exponent is the minus one plus bias. So what is the bias for the single precision? It's a 127. And then for the double precision, the bias value is the 1023. So we can uh, calculate the exponent of the single precision floating point number. I got 126 is the here. And then 1022 is the here. So fraction is the one zero 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 zero, and then for the exponent we can calculate the exponent like this. So this how uh, that example show how the real decimal number can be represented as the uh, floating point number for computer arithmetic. So and then also we can uh, translate the uh, floating point number to the uh, real decimal number. So this is the example, it's a single precision floating point number. And then this is the um, data, it's a 32-bit data. 
So size of the, this data is the 32 bit. So, and then we can uh, split the, this data into the sign part, and then fraction part, and the exponent part. So this is the sign part, and this is the exponent part, and this is the fraction part. So for the sign part, so sign value is the one that means that this value, this number is the negative. And then fraction part, so we can calculate the fraction part like this. So what does that mean? It's one over four, just like it's a 0 0.25. So 1.25 actually. And then for exponent part, no, it's exponent. <laughs> Not exponent, it's exponent. So exponent part is the uh, 10001, so it's uh, minus bias is the 127. So, so, so 128 minus 127 is 2. So what does that, what is this number? It's the minus 1.25 multiplied by 2 to 2. So you can calculate, it's a 4, so you can calculate it's a minus 5. So here. So based on the, this single precision uh, floating point number data, then we can calculate the decimal number <laughs> easily. I don't know. And then also, so I said that for the exponent number, all zeros and the all ones are deserved. Actually, the exponent of all zeros are deserved for the d normal number. So d normal number means that it's a very small number. So very small. So very small means that it's uh, very similar. It's uh, similar to the zero. So if the exponent numbers are exponent part has the all zeros, then for this number. Actually, the sign part is the same, but for the fraction part, it's a significant part as the zero plus fraction. So this is a special case, actually. Special case if the exponent, exponents are all zeros, and then minus bias. Because exponent number is the all zero, so for the, this exponent is the zero minus bias. It's the minus bias. So actually, this this number, the size of the, this number is very small. So that means that this number is uh, very close to the number zero. Like, uh, uh, and then, so it's a zero plus fraction, like a zero point fraction. And then multiply by 2 to minus bias. So this minus number is the 127 for the single precision and then uh, 10 to 23 for the double precision, right? So, yeah, right. Uh -huh. So this is a, this number is called the denormal number. And then for the old, for the zero number zero for the floating point number is the fraction. All fractions are all zeros because then it's a all zero point zero multiplied by two two minus bias. So this is the zero. So exponent are zero. All exponent has the all zero bit, and then fraction part has the all also all zero bit so that represent the number zero for the with the uh, inner floating point numbers. So and then if the fraction, oh, so for, for, the, for the number zero, we can, uh, this number has the sign, sign B as the one or zero. So actually for the floating point number, there are two representation uh, for the number zero. And then also, uh, if the exponent part has all ones, so this this number is also deserved for some special uh, numbers. Actually, uh, 
For example, if the exponent has the all ones and the fraction part has all zeros, and then this number means the infinity. Infinity. So the infinity means that if the number is so large, the size of this number is so large, so this number cannot be represented as the some single precision or double precision number. So that is the infinity. But uh, now yesterday, my daughter uh, played with the calculator, and then so she uh, made a very large number and multiplied by a very large number. Then the calculator uh, uh, generate the output infinity. So this uh, that is also true for the some normal computer machines. So if the some floating num number floating point number has has the very large number. And then this very large number is multiplied by another large number, very large number. Then the generate calculate generate result uh, cannot be represented as the some single precision or double precision number. So in this case, the computer processor uh, report the infinity as the result. So oh, this number is uh, uh, used for uh, reporting some infinity number, the very large number. And then if the exponent has the all ones, and then the fraction part is not is is non-zero, the so fraction part is non-zero. That means that the fraction the bit in the fraction part is not zero. That means it's the not a number. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes it's, it's a NAN, uh, capital N, and then lower A, and then capital N. It's a not a number. So sometimes we can see the, this NAN in the Excel sheet or some <laughs> application, some result of our application. So not a number means that it's, it's a just another number. That means the, this number cannot be represented as the some real number. So what, what is the case? It's a divided by zero, right? Such, such as the divided by zero. It's a floating point number. Uh, some, some floating point number is divided by uh, another floating, <laughs> floating point number zero. It's a divided by zero, but this number cannot be represented as the normal number. So in this case, the computer processor will generate the narrow number result. Like, okay. in, in that case, the exponent part has all ones, but fraction part is not a zero. So the computer processor will put the, this narrow number result. So let's see how the computer processor uh, calculates the some arithmetic of the floating point numbers. And then first, we can start from our real-world examples. So I I already told that. So the so how to, how the computer processor work for the arithmetic uh, arithmetic operation is very similar to the our real-world uh, operation by human. <laughs> so. This is the example of the floating point addition by human. So how can you calculate the floating point number for the decimal number? So this is the example. So there are two operands here. And then the one operand number is the 9.99, 9.999 9 multiplied by 10 to the 1. And then the another operand is the 1.610 multiplied by 10 to minus 1. So how can we calculate the, these additions for the decimal floating point number? The first, we need to align the decimal points. So that means that we make the uh, exponent of exponent of the two operand the same. So so we can make the any value, but so in this case the, the this is larger, so we can uh, align the decimal point like uh, the, the, 
it is the same, but this operand is converted to the 0 0.016 multiplied by 10 to 1. It's the same, actually. And then, actually, uh, the significant part is the same. Ah, no, no, no. The exponent part is the same. Then we can uh, calculate the significant part. Now, so just this is the add operation. We can just add the significant part, and then we and then we normalize the this significant part because this the the number becomes the ten point zero blah, blah blah blah. So we need to normalize the this part like a one point zero zero one five here. And then the exponent is also increased here, but we know that and on this part the number of digit is has the so three digit here so we need to round the digit of this floating floating point number so we need to round and renormalize the number like on 1.002 so for the floating point number it's the same for the control processors. So let's start, start from the four digit uh, uh, <clears throat> floating point number. And the, but this floating point number is represented as the binary number, binary format. So in the next case, you can find the significant here and the exponent here and the significant here and exponent here. So What's the first the first step? So in the decimal number, the first step is the align the decimal point. So in this case, this is the binary number. So we need to align binary point here. So we can change the this exponent of the this number as the two to minus one, and then so so after the first step, the binary point is the same. So and then uh, we can calculate the significant here. So this is the result of the uh, calculation. So it should be two two minus one. And then we also we need to normalize the result. So in this result is the one point one one zero uh zero point zero zero one. So in this case we can we need to normalize this number as the one point zero zero zero. Then multiply by two to minus four. And then it's so also like the decimal uh, operation. So we need to uh, round and re renormalize, renormalize if necessary. If necessary, it's the same. The step of the floating point operation is the same in the real world and the same for the computer arithmetic units. But as you can see, this is the simple add operation, but this steps for the add floating point add operation is much com much more complex than the integer add or subtract operations so there are four steps and there are four steps here and then you may, you, uh, as you can see these steps are much more complex much more complex than the integer type arithmetic units so it's much more complex than integer adder. So that means that this floating point arithmetic unit is uh, needs the, some more complex hardware. And then that means that this more complex hardware cannot complete the, its operation within one clock cycle. So normally for the floating point arithmetic unit uh, requires the multiple clock cycles uh, so actually, we uh, so we will learn about the pipelining in the next chapter. But for the integer time unit, uh, integer type uh, arithmetic unit, uh, we assume that the uh, integer type data can be completed within one clock cycle with the integer type ALU. But for the floating point operation, this floating point unit uh, consumes the uh, multiple clock cycles, uh, requires multiple clock cycles 
because the hardware complexity of the this floating point unit is much more complex. Also, as you can see, this floating point add adds add operation can uh, is composed of also multiple steps. So this floating point units also can be pipelined. So this is uh, some uh, hardware structure hardware structure of the floating point adder. So actually, for the uh, <coughs> for the floating point operation for, for the uh, binary number is composed of multiple steps, and then we use the four steps. So also you can uh, also we can uh, implement the floating point adder with the, this multiple steps like a step one, step two, and step three, and step four. So the step is the defined at the previous slide. So this is the some structure of the floating point unit. Also, floating point multiplication. So we can start from the our some decimal number examples. It's a real world example. So actually, it's the same. <laughs> it's a simple. So I believe you learn the about the, this multiplication of the floating point number. You learn the this contents and the when you are. Uh, elementary school student. So how can we multiply the, these two numbers? So for the exponent part, we just add the exponent for the multiplication. And then for the division, we sub subtract the exponent. It's <laughs> simple. <laughs> so you learned this in the, in the elementary school. So new what is the new exponent? So it's a 10 it's a minus O, it's a 10 minus O equal 5. And then, so we just add the exponent here, and then for the significant, so you just multiply the significant. So, uh, so just multiply these two significants, so it becomes the 10.212. Then also apply the normalize, normalization, and then round, and then normal, renormalize if necessary here. Also for the multiplication, we need to also de uh, determine the sign of the result. So plus multiply plus is a plus. So plus multiply by minus is the minus. Minus multiply by minus is the plus, like this. So determine the sign of the multiplication. So these are the steps for uh, multiplication in a decimal number format. So in the real world example, you learn this uh, process in the elementary school. And then for the binary number, it's the same. So, so add the exponent here, and then multiply significant, and then normalize, round, and then determine sign. So actually, it's exactly the same steps in the real world. So control processor also follows the, these steps to calculate the multiplication of the floating point numbers. But so as you can see, the, this step is uh, <coughs> is very similar to the floating point add operation. So the complexity of the floating point multiplier is uh, very similar uh, similar to the complexity of the floating point header. But what is the difference? So the multiplication multiplier applies the multiplication of the two significants. So for, for the floating point arithmetic unit, the complexity of the hardware is uh, similar to the multiplication or division or add or subtract. So this floating point arithmetic hardware support the add, addition, or subtraction, and multiplication or division of the floating point numbers. And then sometimes uh, some uh, floating point number uh, FP unit, FP, this is called the FP unit, the floating point unit support the uh, reciprocal, it's a some conversion, conversion, and then square root. And, and then some uh, computer hardware support the, this square root function as the some special function, like a special and a special function unit. 
And so sometimes the computer processor needs to calculate the uh, square root or sine or cosine or tangent or some, yes, and some special functions. So for these special functions, computer, computer processor may implement the, some special hardware or, or these special functions can be uh, represented the, some uh, complicated uh, operation of the floating point num arithmetics. So, so for, for the floating point arithmetic hardware, uh, usually uh, takes uh, several cycles. So this hardware can be pipelined. And then in the risk five or processor, these floating point numbers are handled by a dedicated floating point registers. So actually for the some integer type uh, processing, the risk five uh, has the 32 registers like from x0 to the x31. So this is the integer type data registers. And then for the floating point operation, the risk five also uh, provide the dedicated floating point registers. And then it's the from F0 to the F31. And then the precision of the, this floating point register is the double precision. That means that the size of the one floating point register entry is 8 byte, so 60 profit. So how about the single precision? So the single precision value stored in the lower 32 bit of the one register entry. So you need to uh, memor uh, memorize that the, the, the risk five processor floating point numbers or floating point number data is stored in the floating point registers. And then this is uh, actually the most of the processor provide some special dedicated registers for the floating point number. It's the same to the some Intel processor or ARM processor. Yeah, yeah. And then maybe, maybe. <laughs> yeah. So, so that means that if the control processor supports the floating point arith arithmetic operation, as a, as a some floating point arithmetic instructions, then this control processor has the some uh, floating point registers. So the at P instruction, the floating point instructions only uh, use this floating point registers. So this, uh, so if the programmer uh, uh, <coughs> uses some floating point variables, then these variables are stored in the floating point registers. And then also for the, this load or store instruction, is also support the floating point data like FLW and FLD. What is double? It's a word. Word is the 32 bit. So this is the single precision. And then D is the double word. It's the 64 bit. It's the double precision. Uh, this is the, some floating point instructions supported by RISC five process processors, and then for the uh, for the uh, floating point instruction RISC five use use the F as the prefix of the instruction, and then you know to uh, distinguish the single precision and the double double precision, the RISC five also used the postfix S for the single precision uh, floating point numbers, and then that D is the post fix of the instruction for the double precision uh, floating point arithmetic operation. Like this is the example. So F add that S times the floating point add what? Floating point add and then the <clears throat> precision is the single precision, not S. And then the double precision is the F add dot D. 
Also, we can use the, some single and double precision comparison for the floating point data. That, but this com comparison result is stored in the integer data <coughs> and, and integer register. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. So this is the example code of the floating point uh, instructions. So this code uh, convert the uh, Celsius degree to no 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 no. So Fahrenheit degree to the Celsius degree. So this is the equation. So you can find the some floating point load here, and then floating point division here, like five divided by nine. And then it's a floating point load and floating point sub, subtract, and then floating point multiplication. And then after that, the program is returned to the, um, the original original pro application. So we can find we can find that for the floating point operation, the floating point in registers are used to also these floating point numbers are stored in the floating point registers. Uh, but normally, in the, in the, for, <coughs> for some, some normal case, the compiler can calculate the 5 divided by 9, and then compiler can uh, store the, this result of the 5 divided by you know, some memories. So, This type of code is a, some, it's a dumb code, dumb translation. Okay, but uh, <coughs> it is it has some, um, some exception part. So normal, so actually the <coughs> IEEE standards are defined the um, more specification for the floating point numbers. Like our <coughs> rounding control and then some uh, extra bits for the pre precision, but the computer hardware does not support the all requirement of the IEEE standard because the this specification is so complex. So if the computer hardware support the all uh, all of the specification uh, defined by this IEEE standard, then the computer hardware may be much more complex. So the computer hardware support the uh, very uh, some critical part is uh, some some <clears throat> some critical part of the uh, standard but then ignore the some other part like a round option and then some control of the precision. So this is the trade-off between the computer hardware and the performance and then some requirement by the application. So this is the some decision uh, determined by the computer hardware manufacturer. And then let's see the server of the parallelism. So 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 for some applications may require the, some lop precision. So that means that actually uh, <clears throat> uh, for the, some multiple um, multimedia data, uh, multimedia applications may require the, some lop precision. So that means that uh, for the, some graphics application or some multimedia application may uh, require the 8 bit data. And then this 8 bit data is enough for the that type of applications. But if we use the very very precise uh, very uh, some large adder or some large arithmetic units for the this lop uh, lop precision data then it's the waste of hardware. So it is because so that type of application only requires the A bit resolution but not to calculate that this AP resolution data, then the computer hardware used the so some some large hardware unit, large arithmetic unit like a, 
128 8-bit adder. So this is the waste of, <coughs> uh, waste of computer hardware resources. And then the, another, some, another waste is the, the waste of clock cycles. Why? So if the data size is only 8-bit, then we can uh, uh, <clears throat> we can store this AP data, the multiple AP data in the 120 AP registers. So how many? How many data can be stored? 128 divided by 8. So actually in the 120 AP register file, as a register file entry, that we can store the 16 AP data. So that means that if we store the assessment 16, 16 AP data and then calculate the uh, 6, 6 bin AP data in parallel um, concurrently, then in one clock, we can, the, this uh, computer processor can generate the result of the eight, uh, 16 uh, data, 16 numbers in one clock. So this is the idea of the that the processor or some uh, uh, CMD, CMD architecture. So single CMD means that single instruction, uh, single instruction and multiple data. So this type of uh, architecture is uh, uh, used up at the type of prompt like uh, L dot V and then V1, V2, and V3. So this type of operand has the better, better type of operand. So what is the better? The better is the uh, multiple set of data. So in the in the vector registers, so multiple data can be stored. So so if for the AP data, we can store the 16 AP data in the 120 AP adder and then also uh, in the register and then for the 120 bit adder so we can if this is the 120 bit adder so if we disconnect the some carry propagation between the this 8 bit or uh, 8 bit partial result then we can simply generate the 16 result of the 8 bit data so it's easy so this <clears throat> yeah, so actually for uh, uh, this some resolution the, the required resolution is uh, defined by the um, applications and then so in, in that for that application so we can apply the, this some data level parallelism like or some uh, single instruction and multiple data architecture SIMD. And this is called the subword parallelism. So it's a called the data level parallelism and the vector parallelism or single SIMD as a single instruction and multiple data. And then let's see the some policies and people. So actually, if the what if the number is multiplied by the power of 2, then we can simply uh, use the shift operation. And then, yeah, uh, I believe you already know, but for the signed integer or signed numbers, so you need to apply the shift operation cautiously. So it is because for the signed operation, if the, the sign bit may be 1, that means it's a negative number. So if we apply the some logical logical shift, logical shift, then the the final result may be incorrect. So for this case, we need to apply the arithmetic shift. So for the arithmetic right shift, then when we apply the arithmetic right shift, then the MSPB is replicated. So repeated. So this is the arithmetic right shift.
and then the associativity problem for the floating point numbers. So this is the some number data uh, represented as the floating point number. This is the some different associativity. So actually it is x plus y plus g, and then in the real world, x plus y plus g is the same to the we first can calculate x plus y and then g plus g, or in this case we can calculate the x plus y plus g. Actually, in the for the real numbers, these two cases are possible. And then if the some parallel operation is applied, then also parallel operation can uh, apply it for the some different part of the parallel parallel operation, and then we know that if the, if the series of add operation can be usually parallelized. So that means that we can first calculate these two parts and then also calculate another partial, partial result in the parallel operation. So then for the associativity, and then this is because the associativity is possible for the add operation. The problem is for the floating point operation, there's it there can be the problem because of the resolution of the floating point number. So let's see that this number like x plus y. So when we first calculate the x plus y, then this result is the so we know that it's a zero and then zero plus plus one is the one. And how about this case? Because the size of the y is so large compared to the 1.0. So in this case, the result of the y plus g is the 1.5, and then exponent is the 38, and then the so plus is the 0. So in this case, the results are so different. <laughs> That's the problem of the floating point operation. Uh, so if the uh, this incorrect operation actually the incorrect calculation is expected, then the problem will need to uh, 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 arrange the some operation cautiously, uh, carefully, <laughs> carefully, carefully arrange the some. Um, uh, order of the operation. And then also, the, you may think that the uh, resolution, resolution of the floating point is uh, enough, but sometimes it is crit it may be critical for the, some financial or some scientific applications. So <coughs> by the, this resolution, the, sometimes the, the computation result may be incorrect. Because that, that sometimes the some more uh, fine resolution of the uh, uh, calculation is required. Also, uh, it's some uh, so you may uh, you may know about the uh, Intel Pentium floating point uh, bug. It's, it's the bug in the uh, floating point divider unit. So. Actually, the, when the, this bug is found, the Intel announced that this floating point bug is rarely occurs, very rarely. But some economists uh, revealed that this floating point bug happens frequently in the financial application. So he found that this uh, bug happens frequently in the, the Excel operation even in the Excel application, Excel. So, <laughs> because of the, this bug, the Intel uh, recalled all processors that has uh, this floating point uh, divider. So in that, in that year, the revenue of the Intel is, was the, actually minus, so <clears throat> decreased sharply. So actually, <laughs> revenue was minus. So very uh, uh, 
Uh, it was a very <laughs> big uh, <coughs> critical uh, impact for the Intel revenue. 엄청난 손해였죠. 엄청난 손해를 봤습니다. 그때. Okay, so in the, in, the, in chapter three, so I covered uh, explain about the some number system of the computer arithmetic unit. And then uh, so there are two types of a number system: it's so an integer and then floating point number, floating point type. And then <coughs> this arithmetic operation is the some basic operation of the computer processor. So uh, this uh, some arithmetic operation unit maybe including the, the computer processor computer processor and then this is the core of the computer processor unit so <clears throat> actually this is the some basic of the uh, computer arithmetics so uh, you need to uh, memorize the, this part <laughs> yeah Chris and the chapter 3 as well and the number system and so right class ろくんですんだ。うん、はじめもう、エロボンドリ意味デジタルロジックデザインへそ uh, then, uh, the chapter three, and then the next class, I uh, will go forward to the chapter four pipeline. So, pipeline is actually a, uh, a course, so, well, I have no instruction set, though, Jungya, or Hajiman, pipeline, so, I have a course, so, highlight, Kumu, and Yaka. Well, I have a course, so, I have a course, I have a course, I have 따라오시기 바랍니다. 네, 수고하셨습니다. 다음에 보죠. See you later.